I would say that one particular thing was just the the emphasis that we put on that team, the team aspect, that you yourself are not going to get a go um, at Ranger School. It's everyone else around you that's going to get that go for you. So in live, how you take that back to the unit is how do we get mission success real world by incorporating the whole team, using every individual to their maximum potential to accomplish this mission. So building teams, which is a function of being the leader. You should know and, and be intimately familiar with who you're working with. Uh, put them in the right jobs and, and use that. Um, I've only been back at my unit you know, for a short time and, and I'll be moving on, but I could see already even being back that I paid more attention to where that person was from and what motivated them to do what they needed to do because now I can use that and I can use them that, their motivation to motivate them and get them you know, to, to move forward and do the job that they are uh, required to do and be part of that team working towards the mission. So that, I, honestly, that team, the team building aspect of it, learning what it is to motivate others um, to reach a common goal was, was only made better by going to a school like that where you're put in that environment. I think you have to, you have to fit in in the sense that you have to find where you fit in. So you can't be the sandbag, you can't be the tired guy initially. You have to go in there with a fire and you have to realize that every day initially you're being judged and sized up around, you know, with everyone around you. So you have to prove your worth. I think that that's a good thing. Uh, I should want as a professional to show people that I am, I'm worthy of being here. I want to be a leader. I want to challenge myself. I want to challenge you and I want us all to come to the same goal and conclusion which is getting our tab together. So from rap week is where it starts and showing up. I think everyone is, is apprehensive because you don't know. I mean, I, I was a female and I was looking at all the guys. And I really hope I get that guy. He's big. He can carry stuff. You know, everyone's thinking about these things. Um, and what they were thinking about me, I don't know. But what I do know is that after rap week and the squad that I was a part of, was pretty darn happy to have me because I was going to be just as beneficial, just as helpful as anyone else, um, that I wasn't going to be the weakest link. And Rap Week allowed me to prove that, you know, that I wasn't going to be the least competent because I was trained prior to going, as in taking full advantage of the institution I came from, West Point, by p committing myself to being a professional, whether it's tactically and technically proficient, um, and, and showing that I was worth my weight as an officer and that I, I could use this and move forward and be a benefit to the team. So it, it didn't take long. In every phase, it even gets you know, better. You get closer. You, you get to know each other. Um, and you really, really learn how to rely on each other. Not everybody has a good day every day. You're going to have a bad day. And I ended up having mine too. But my squad was then there willing to take a little bit extra slack from me because they knew that that wasn't the norm, that they could rely on me. And today was just a bad day. And I did the same for them. You know, I remember the second time I went through Darby, there's this one bat boy, uh, Biggs, who, you know, we, get, we took a casualty and uh, he took the casualty's rucksack because you got to carry that too, right? So you get four guys on a litter carrying the, the one guy, but somebody has to carry the ruck. So he put it on his front and he was about six foot, like three. And uh, he just walked pretty much the rest of the patrol and all of us were just so relieved because it was like, thank God he's got it. And he was, he looked like he was having no problem. Um, and then I had this moment, and then he got to go on that patrol too. Or he got to go, I think, the next patrol. And I think he had showed everybody, including the RIs, like he was there for the team and he was going to do anything it took to help us. And so then my third time through Darby, I had this like moment where we took a casualty. The AG rucksack was there, and it was like the heaviest rucksack. It's got all the extra ammo, the tripod. And I was just like, I'm doing this. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> so I threw it on, and I just walked with it for – you know, as, as long as I could, which ended up being probably like close to two clicks. Um, by the time I got back to the the camp, people were like, we heard you carry the ruck for six clicks. I was like, no, that's, that didn't happen. <laughs> but, um, you know, the RIs were, you know, impressed by it. The, everybody on the team was happy that I was able to do that because it just it just means less of a burden for you, you know. And it and it motivates you too. You're like, okay, next time I'll get, I'll get the next one, guys. Like, <laughs> so... 
I was happy I was able to do that, and I think that really made a difference for me. I'm a fairly independent person. I'm, I'm very proud of what I've accomplished and what I've done. And what I learned through Ranger School is the work I put in as an individual doesn't matter. Life is a team sport. And no matter how strong or weak I am, I'm not gonna succeed without the team. And Ranger School really brings that point home, not because of the missions and not because of what I did while I was at that school, but it was getting a 37-year-old body ready for Ranger School. That was, you know, work with a nutri nutritionist, talk to a physical therapist, work with a coach at the gym, talk to people who have been recent Ranger School graduates and find out what's going on. This isn't something that you can just do on your own. And it also demonstrated what a big team I've always had. And even some of the, what people would call the naysayers, were part critical parts of that team because they forced me to validate my reason for going. The people who asked me, hey, how can you leave your kids and abandon your family for nine plus weeks? Those were the ones that made me sit down and say, well, I can because of this. And when it got to my second mountains phase and I was missing my son's birthday and I just wanted to lay in the prone and cry, I remember the answers I gave those people six, seven months earlier. And I knew why I was there and I knew that it was the right decision to miss my son's seventh birthday. Didn't feel good then, but it was what I needed to be able to push through some of those longer, more difficult days. So I guess the biggest lesson I took away from it is life is truly a team sport. <laughs>